Hi guys, welcome back. Today's video is going to be another reading vlog. I'm gonna be reading some of the books off of my April TBR. If you haven't already, you should go watch the video where the Easter eggs pick my April TBR. I did a fun little twist on the video for Easter. And yeah, I basically got, I don't actually remember how many books I picked. I think I picked like six books. Um, and yeah, those are the ones that are on my April TBR. So the first book that I'm reading for this video is called The Paper Palace by Miranda Cowley Heller. I had never heard of this book before, but I got it for Christmas. And yeah, I feel like right away you would think this is like some cute spring summer romance book. No, it's a psychological fiction book. Um, and it does have some pretty heavy topics. So this is about a girl named Ellie and her guy friend Jonas. And it goes back and forth from present day back to, I believe the 1970s. When her and Jonas were kids, they hung out at this, it was like a little camp, but it was in Ellie's family. And it had cabins, it was on the ocean, and there was like ponds. It was very much giving where the crawdads sing vibes. Um, and so now they're grown up when it goes back to present day and they're each married to their own significant others. He has a wife, she's married, she actually has three kids now. So they have their own lives, but one night they're drinking and they hook up. So it does start out very strong with the cheating trope, which is not for everyone, but that's about as far as I've gotten. I don't know where this book is gonna go, where it's gonna take me, but I'm only 47 pages in so far, which is chapter five. So I don't really know which information yet, but this is a psychological fiction, which is not something I normally read, but yeah, it has like an average of four stars on Goodreads with like over 300,000 reviews. So it should be pretty good. I do want to mention real quick though, along with the cheating trope that there have been a few mentions of like sexual assault in this book, um, which obviously not everyone wants to read about. It definitely took me by surprise when I read that line or the few lines that it mentions it. So just a heads up disclaimer that that is talked about in this book. It's not a main topic, but it's in there. So yeah, it is a beautiful spring day. I'm going to go outside and read some of this book. And yeah, that's what this video is gonna be. We're gonna read probably two or three books off of my TBR. And yeah, let's just get right into it. Real quick, I'm sorry if y'all can hear the dishwasher. I just started it, not even remembering that I needed to film this. So if you can hear that, sorry, I'm gonna try to make this quick, but I am on page 141 of this book. And I also just got to a part where it switches point of view. So it's now on Jonas's point of view, which I'm not the biggest Jonas fan. So I'm a little scared to see how this second half goes, but so far the book is okay. It's definitely not what I thought it was gonna be at all. So. I think I already mentioned that it goes between like current time and then like the past back in the 70s and the past basically just tells the story from Ellie's point of view which so does the present but the past is kind of sad because it just shows Ellie's life growing up when she was a kid and how her mom had all these different men that just like came and went and they were constantly moving and most of the men were like either abusive towards Ellie or just plain mean to her didn't like her and her mom just looked the other way on it so yeah it's definitely sad not the kind of sad that would make you want to cry but I'm just it makes you think about life and how it's like if you didn't grow up with this life then you, you should like you should feel really grateful for it so yeah the book is okay I'm not loving it but I'm not hating it I feel like right now it's gonna be around a three star but I guess we'll see there's just really no plot to this book like there's a storyline and it's easy to follow like it's easy to know what's happening even though it like goes back between present and past, but it's just, I don't know what the book's leading up to. There's nothing that it's, like, I don't know what the book is gonna end with, um, but I'm almost halfway through. So I guess there's still lots of time to see, but I'm gonna keep reading and I will let you guys know either tonight or tomorrow how I'm liking Jonas's point of view. Let's talk about The Paper Palace because I finished this book last night and wow, it was insane. So I mentioned in one of the earlier videos, whenever I was still in the beginning of the book, how this book does talk a little bit about sexual assault, specifically on a child, which is already such a heavy topic. Um, but it got a lot more prominent towards or like after the second half of the book. So that is kind of what the whole book actually focuses on, which I 
I didn't see that at the beginning of the book but that's what the whole book is based around so it's about Ellie she's the main character and it goes back and forth from I think I've mentioned this present day back in the past when she was a little girl when the assault happened and it just shows her dealing with it back then and then dealing with it now as an adult along with some other things that were traumatizing as a kid for her. Although it is a very heavy book, it was written beautifully honestly. I've never read a book by this person. She actually worked on some popular shows such as The Sopranos or The Sopranos. I don't know how you pronounce it but I have watched that and it was really good but yeah she was a part of HBO Max and some famous shows which is kind of crazy but yeah, the book was just overall heavy, but it was written really beautifully, and it's definitely not for everyone, but if you can stand reading about that kind of stuff, then I would recommend it. It's not gruesome. There's no, it's not like very detailed. It just, it talks about it happening, and then just her trying to cope with it. So nothing too, too, too crazy or detailed. Um, but yeah, I didn't know if I was going to rate the book. I didn't know if I wanted to, but I think I am. I'm going to give it between a 3.75 and a 4. I need to think on it just a little bit longer. So I'll definitely let you guys know before the end of the video. But on a brighter note, one of the other books that I picked from the Easter eggs for my April TBR video was Divine Rivals. And I feel like everyone's heard of that. It's a very famous popular fantasy book so it's actually on kindle unlimited i've wanted to read this book for so long and i'm so happy it's on kindle unlimited um so yeah i'm gonna start that and i will either talk to you guys today or tomorrow and let you guys know what i think of it i'm not even really sure what the book is about so we're going in blind but yeah i will talk to you guys soon and i'll let you know what i think about it Guys, I am obsessed with Divine Rivals. It is so good so far. I'm literally flying through it. So I am 27% of the way through, which is page 97. And I should probably tell y'all what it's about, even though I feel like everyone already knows because it's a really popular book. So there's this girl named Iris and she works at the town's like big newspaper company. And there's a guy named Roman who also works there. And I wouldn't say they're really like enemies at all. They're just, they're kind of like rivals. They're both in competition to get the big like column in the paper. And so they're kind of like fighting against each other, but they are like kind of friends. They bicker, but they also like they can talk and have a conversation. So they're not really enemies, but Winnow is having a bit of a hard time. Her brother went off to war and she doesn't know if he's alive or dead. And so she's kind of just like grieving and in this really weird spot. Like they don't have electricity at home. And so she's just, she's kind of like in a weird spot in life. And she's been writing letters to her brother, but she hasn't been sending them off because she doesn't have an address to send them to because he's at war. And so one day she, I don't remember what it was, if she was just like putting her letters under her door or something or like a cabinet or something in her room, but apparently they've been getting sent off to someone. And one night she's sitting in her room and a letter comes back out from under her door, which is kind of creepy, but that's the little magic aspect of it, which also this book is not, it does not have as much like fantasy in it as I thought it was going to have. It's, it has like a hint of magic so far, but that's where the magic comes in. It's like, she's been sending off these letters, not sending them off, but she's been like putting them under her wardrobe. And then she's sitting in her room and a letter comes back one day and she basically starts up this little like pen pal thing with someone who she doesn't know who this person is. They're just kind of like anonymous, anonymously writing to each other. That person actually ends up being Romans, but he knows who it is. Like he knows that it's Iris that he's writing back to, but she doesn't know that it's Roman, which is already, I really like the aspect of that. Um, and so they're kind of like telling their secrets to each other. So she doesn't know that she's telling her, you know, deep, dark thoughts and secrets to Roman, but he ends up sending secrets back to her. And so while they're like really good friends through this like pin pal thing, she they're like not that close in real life when they're talking face to face. So it's really cute, but but Iris's life is starting to go downhill a little bit more now. We just got to a part where something happened and 
she quit the newspaper and so I think that Roman might be telling her soon that like he's the person she's writing to but overall I'm really not that far in yet I'm only 27% in but I feel like I'm flying through this book and it is just so so good it's just not what I thought it was gonna be like it feels more just fiction so far not any fantasy but there are little hints of magic here and there like there's magic in the world so yeah, I'm just absolutely loving it and I just want to read, 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 read. I feel like I'm going to literally get to 50% tonight, which is fine by me because it's a really good book and I cannot wait to get the physical copy already. So yeah, that is where I'm at. I'm going to keep reading and I will talk to you guys tomorrow with another update. I have been on the floor in literally like every single one of these videos. I just love sitting on the floor to update y'all. I feel like I get the best positions that way, but guys, I am literally almost done with this book. I am flying through it. This is like record breaking time this year for me, like finishing a book. I think it's like 365 pages, which is like an average length for a book and it's taking me like two days to read it so right now I am on 70 oh wait it went okay I'm on 71 percent which is page 261 so almost done with it and I am I'm just absolutely obsessed I love Roman and Iris's relationship I just think it is so cute how they're writing letters to each other I just love it so much and I'm definitely going to finish it today it says that I have two hours and two minutes left in this book and it's only four o'clock so yeah, I'm literally about to sit down. I got a Dr. Pepper from the gas station. I love a cold fountain drink and I'm gonna sit here and finish this book because I'm obsessed. I don't know if it's gonna be a full five stars, but it's definitely gonna be like between a four and a five. It's just so, so good. And yeah, I'm just absolutely loving it. I would recommend it to anyone. There's like no spice in this book, like maybe a kissing scene and that's it. But well, so far, I still have a hundred pages left, but so far there's been like no spice just in case anyone was wondering because some people don't like spice but yeah it's just so good and I cannot wait to finish this book I guess honestly if the last hundred pages is really good it could be a five stars so I guess we'll see but I'm gonna go finish this and I'll talk to you guys once I finish the book okay guys I ended up finishing Divine Rivals last night and wow this book was so so good I literally finished it in like two days and I didn't know what I was going to rate it, or I still actually don't know what I'm going to rate it. I know that on Goodreads, you can say you finished a book, like mark it as read and not rate it yet. I went ahead and just put it as four stars on Goodreads, but I might go back and change it to five because I originally, you can't do halves on Goodreads. So I originally was like, this was a four and a half. Like it was such an amazing book, but I just didn't have that five star feeling. Like there's a special like feeling. It's like a tingly sense that I get. I feel like everyone relates. Like you just, you just know when it's a five stars and this book was so, so good, but it wasn't quite five stars. But now like I've been thinking about it. I slept on it and I'm like, maybe it was five stars. Like I cannot stop thinking about that book. It was just the way that it ended too. Like I am so happy that the second book is out, which is called Ruthless Vows. It's also actually on Kindle Unlimited and I might read it. I think I'm gonna start that today. Like the way that Divine Rivals ended, I just cannot, I need to know what happens. I can't not know what happens. So I might start that, but that does unfortunately mean that is the end of this video. I was gonna do three books, but I honestly just don't even want to read another one of the books on my TBR right now. I want to go straight into Ruthless Vows. So that's gonna be the end of this video. If you have not read Divine Rivals, I would highly recommend it. You should go read it. It was so good. It's not as fantasy driven as I thought it was going to be. It's more so just like fiction, almost like historical fiction. I don't know when this book like takes place, like in what year, but it felt like a historical fiction to me, but like with a hint of fantasy, if that makes sense. There just wasn't that much fantasy in it. And I thought that this was going to be a full fantasy based book, but it's not like that. So yeah, just keep that in mind. But I really liked it and I'm excited to see where the second book takes me. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm thinking of doing another one of these in a couple of weeks um, and I'll probably post it at the end of April or the beginning of May just so that I can read some more books on my TBR. So let me know if you liked this video. And yeah, I love you guys so much. Make sure to like this video and subscribe if you enjoy watching me. I love y'all, y'all are my besties. And yeah, I will see all of y'all in the next video.